Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Friends, I'm going to apologize for something that I have uh, no control over. But the names Rehoboam and Jeroboam are very similar. It's uh, to our Western ears. It's hard to keep them straight. But Rehoboam is in the south. Jeroboam is in the north. So just a reminder. Second Chronicles chapter 11. When Rehoboam arrived in Jerusalem, he mustered Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 able young men, to go to war against Israel and to regain the kingdom for Rehoboam. But this word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God. Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, this is what the Lord says. Do not go up to fight against your fellow Israelites. Go home, every one of you, for this is my doing. So they obeyed the word of the Lord and turned back from marching against Jeroboam. Rehoboam lived in Jerusalem and built up towns for defense in Judah, Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethshur, Soko, Adullam, Gath, Merishah, Ziph, Adoraim, Lachish, Azekah, Zorah, Ajalon, and Hebron. These were fortified cities in Judah and Benjamin. He strengthened their defenses and put commanders in them with supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He put shields and spears in all of the cities and made them very strong. So Judah and Benjamin were his. The priests and Levites from all of their districts throughout Israel sided with him. The Levites even abandoned their pasture lands and property and came to Judah and Jerusalem because Jeroboam and his sons had rejected them as priests of the Lord, when he appointed his own priests for the high places and for the goat and calf idols that he had made. Those from every tribe of Israel who set their hearts on seeking the Lord, the God of Israel, followed the Levites to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices to the Lord, the God of their ancestors. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rehoboam, son of Solomon, three years, following the ways of David and Solomon during this time. Rehoboam married Mehaloth, who was the daughter of David's son, Jeremoth, and of Abigail, the daughter of Jesse's son, Eliab. She bore him sons, Jeush, Shemariah, Zaham, and then he married Mekah, daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Atai, Ziza, and Shelemoth. Rehoboam loved Mekah, daughter of Absalom, more than any of his other wives and concubines. In all, he had 18 wives and 60 concubines, 28 sons, and 60 daughters. Rehoboam appointed Abijah, son of Mekah, as crown prince among his brothers, in order to make him king. He acted wisely, dispersing some of his sons throughout the districts of Judah and Benjamin and to all of the fortified cities. He gave them abundant provisions and took many wives for them. And so in this chapter, Benjamin becomes a permanent part of the southern kingdom, along with most of the Levites who had been previously dispersed throughout all the 12 tribes. And um, some from the other 10 tribes in the north came and and joined permanently with the southern kingdom. So first, Rehoboam tries to muster up an army from Judah and Benjamin to fight against Jeroboam. And so he raises up a 180,000-man army. But the Lord sends a prophetic word through a man named Shemaiah. The Lord says, Say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin, this is what the Lord says, Do not go fight against your fellow Israelites. Go home, every one of you, because this is my doing. So imagine that. You know, the the Lord says, this is judgment. Uh, It has nothing to do with you. Your predecessor, Solomon, your father, caused judgment to come. And this is the result of my judgment, essentially, is what the Lord was saying. So don't fight it. And they obeyed the prophetic word of the Lord. So the prophets in those days, this Shemaiah, had the word of the Lord, and they listened to it as the voice of God. And they averted a war with massive casualties. 
And then Jeroboam decided that he was going to establish idolatry in Israel. It says that he appointed his own priests for the high places and for the goat and calf idols that he had made. And so this establishment of idolatry, why did he do that? He established two different locations for worship in the northern kingdom. Previously, all of the 12 tribes had to come on the pilgrimage festivals to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices to the Lord. And so this Jeroboam decided, well, we can't have everybody going three times a year to Jerusalem or they'll reconcile. So he created cities of worship in Dan in the far north and in um, Bethel further south from Dan, but still north of the southern kingdom. And so he built, amazingly, idols and stuck them there. Friends, this idolatry resulted ultimately in the judgment on the northern kingdom. This idolatry was never done away with. As long as the northern kingdom existed, this idolatry continued in these two false cities of worship. Not only that, because the Levites had abandoned him, he made other people the priests that were not eligible to be priests. In fact, First Kings tells us he, he made priests of the lowest people. So they, you know, the people couldn't do anything else. He goes, You're, you can be a priest. Let me just read you a short passage from uh, First Kings chapter 12 that talks about this with a little more detail, not about the, the false priests, but about the division with the idolatry. Jeroboam thought to himself, the kingdom will now likely revert to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, they will again give their allegiance to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah. They will kill me and return to King Rehoboam. After seeking advice, the king made two golden calves. He said to the people, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Here are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. That sounds a lot like what happened while Moses was on Mount Sinai and uh, Aaron made the golden calf that appeased the people temporarily but invoked the wrath of God. And so the kingdom was divided and the northern kingdom became apostate. In verse 16, I'm back to Second Chronicles chapter 11, those from every tribe of Israel who set their heart on seeking the Lord, the God of Israel, followed the Levites to Jerusalem. So an untold multitude from the northern ten tribes came and became part of the, the southern kingdom. Then there's a list of um, uh, Rehoboam's wives and, and children. Um, I read that. I'm not going to go back over it. So, Lord, we ask that you would forgive Israel's idolatry. But, Lord, we also ask that you would forgive us for anything in our lives that we've made idols of. May nothing come between us and you. May we have nothing alongside of you in competition for our affection toward you. Lord, help us to clean up the idols in our own lives, whether they be money, whether they be fame, power, whatever, God, alcohol, drugs, whatever idols we have, sex, Lord, gambling, whatever the idols are that are not of your kingdom. Help us to set them aside, Lord, and not have diversions that lead us away from you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.